five tips, B2B webinar strategy, how to deliver webinars that sell so that you land more clients and why should you be interested in this if you're selling B2B consulting, business coaching or any sort of service selling to other businesses. Quite simply because people are tired of sales calls, this offers an alternative to a sales call. It allows the prospect to check you out from afar, get a feel for you and they're much more likely to attend a webinar than they are to go on a sales call with you. Webinars are my thing, we've been doing it three and a half years, one funnel, one webinar, one live webinar, it's generated over $2 million for me in my business and I'm gonna share the top five tips that are really, really gonna help you to deliver better webinars, feel confident, know how to handle trolls, know how to get to the end of the presentation and pitch without feeling awkward and pitch without breaking the relationship of people that aren't quite ready. So let's jump into it, shall we? Number one. Tony Robbins does not warm up his own crowd. Joe Dispenser, another event I went to, he doesn't warm up his own crowd and neither should you as the authority. Everything you do say and that happens on the webinar will either build your authority or destroy your authority. And no, but you don't see Tony Robbins come on and go, hey, I'm so excited, I can't wait to come on. He has someone that warms up for him. All the great rock bands have someone that warms up. And how does this translate into the way you deliver the live webinar? Because if you do this right, you can have already won clients before you even say a word live. So what you should do is you should start the live webinar, one o'clock Eastern time on a Wednesday is when I like to do it for business owners. That gets best show up if you're selling to, selling to salaried professionals, maybe 6 or 7 p.m. And 15 minutes before you want to start the Zoom webinar room. I love doing it on Zoom webinar. You can also do it on Zoom meetings. Doesn't really make any difference. I prefer the control that Zoom, Zoom webinar does. You wanna put on a reel, what's a reel? A back-to-back -back testimonial reel. Just put testimonial after testimonial after testimonial. Make them interesting, interviews, people with great energy, and put at the bottom of it, get someone to put the graphics on it. The live training will start shortly. Put that there. Ever since three and a half years, we've never had anyone complain about seeing these testimonials. And in fact, we've had feedback that they enjoy seeing other people's stories. It's not these in your face testimonials. It's more dialogue and people sharing their journey. And let me ask you a question. How much would it cost you using paid advertising to get an ideal client, get the time, focus and energy necessary for them to watch 20 minutes of your results? thousands of dollars more it's gonna cost a lot of money you get it for free you come on the webinar at the start they're already pre-sold you're already an authority they've already seen your results and you step into it all right number two what's the number two tip present transformation not incremental improvement what do i mean by presenting transformation and incremental improvement all a webinar is, is a sales presentation. If you don't love sales, I'll deal with that on point number five. And what is a sales presentation? Well, if somebody is going to buy from you, they need to believe something very different to what they believed when they weren't going to buy from you. It really is that simple. And every single prospect in the B2B space comes to a webinar doing something that doesn't work, trying to solve a problem and looking for a way forward and the right person to solve that problem. So all the webinar is, is to position your framework, your expertise as the solution to that problem and show how it is transformational compared to what they're doing now. That requires you to understand your market in depth. You can't present, I'm a leadership coach and I do a different way of leadership coaching. Or I'm a LinkedIn lead generation expert and I do a different way of LinkedIn lead gen. Or I'm a cultural change and talent expert and I do a different way of cultural change and talent um, expertise, that's not going to cut it. It will work, but it's very, very hard and it's not a way to build a sustainable business. What we concentrate on doing and what you should concentrate on doing is package your intellectual property into a framework. We used to have the high profit consulting framework. Now we have the B2B growth, growth team growth framework or the B2B growth team accelerator framework. And then we anchor everybody to that framework throughout the presentation. What do I mean by anchor? Well, we attach the belief that if they use this framework, not me, the framework's the celebrity, not me. If they use this framework, it's going to be transformationally different to what they're doing now and what they're working on. If you focus on incremental, no one books calls. If they do book calls, they don't buy. They'll barter, they'll go on Google and it just doesn't work. So really, really start thinking about how within this passage of time, 45 to 60 minutes, can I change the beliefs so that 
my intellectual property, my framework, my transformational way of doing things. Another way of saying this is new v old, a new way of doing things versus an old way of doing things, or a big idea versus an old idea. If you want to go to the book Play Bigger, I reference it in the chat. Point of view they talk about. What's your point of view compared to the conventional point of view? Every single book on marketing breaks down this idea and they, they use different terms, but at the end of the day, it's all semantics. And if you don't do this in this webinar, you're going to struggle. Number three. There is no pitch. There is no pitch on the webinar. Everyone's like, well, how do I pitch? How do I pitch? I'll tell you what the pitch is. The pitch is not the last five minutes. Everyone's like, well, look, how, how do I deliver this pitch in the last five minutes? The entire webinar, every single second from when the testimonials start at the beginning through to the end of the webinar, that is the pitch. Every single word you say and everything you do. And you need to be disarming objections and dealing with objections because the objective of the webinar is that by the end of the webinar, the prospects believe something very different to what they believed when the webinar started. And that new belief is consistent with your framework and your idea and your intellectual property, intellectual property and what you do. Because if they believe that's the best way to do things, they will do it. That said, there's always going to be general what I call universal objections, like I don't have enough time. Does it work for me? Spell it out. I'm always seeding in very specific language. I talk about time and I, I say, who here has done screen time on their app? When I was getting this going, when I didn't know what I was doing, I did an audit of my time. Do you know how long I was spending on YouTube? It's eight hours. Who here? Come on, put it in the chat. How long do you spend on screen time? And they say all these crazy numbers, all these illegitimate websites. And I say, that's the point. Nobody here doesn't have time to change what they're doing. They, they just need to realign and reprioritize. And when they've looked at that there, we've dealt with that objection. So you need to obviously talk about your framework and what you do, but you also need to layer in all these small universal objections with stories and anecdotes and get agreement in the chat. Because otherwise what happens when you get to the end of it, people will be like, oh, well, I don't know if I should invest. Oh, I don't have time. That's how we eliminate all the objections. That's how we close almost 50% on the calls when we've done it. All right, number four. Number four. This is one of the most important. Maybe I should put this as number two. Ask three questions at the start and get people who are interacting from the start and make them feel safe to interact. Create a safe environment, a safe energy for people to act, interact in the chat. Because when they interact in the chat, they'll give you your pitch. What do I mean by that? Well, you're live. You don't just do your pitch that you were going to do anyway. You look at what people say. You look at what people are having problems with. You look at what they share and then you reference that language. So what I do actually is while the testimonials are on at the start, I'm looking at everybody joining and I'm, I'm going on my mobile onto LinkedIn finding them. So I, so I go on the webinar and I go, hey, Bob, I saw that you're sales director for whatever business. Hey, Julie, I saw that you work as an executive coach. Hey, Catherine, I see that you do cultural work. Thank you so much for coming. Who does that? I've never been on a webinar when I've done that and it starts the interaction. When I didn't used to do that, there wasn't much interaction. But when I do this now, the interaction is through the roof. And then at the beginning I say, right, we're gonna start now, but let's just do three quick questions. What do you do? And specifically, put in the chat who you sell to, because I would love to know if you sell to SMB, enterprise, mid-market, just so that I can make sure this presentation is tailored to you, because everybody here, Everybody's time is important and thank you for taking the time out of your day. Notice I don't say your time is important because going back to what I said at the beginning, the subtlety of your language, the language chunks that you use, the way that you say them will either build your authority and destroy the authority. When I say your time is important, it's like my time's not not important. Of course my time's important. Everybody's time's important. So I get them to answer that question. The second question I get I get I, I ask is, what do you want to get out of the next hour? What is the problem you want to solve? What do you want to do more of or less of? What is it you're after from this time? And they put it in the chat. They give me the presentation. I obviously have a structure. And number three, what's it about for you? Why do you do this? Why do you get out of bed every single day? We know being a business owner is a roller coaster. We know sometimes it's hard, but we keep going, don't we? We keep going. I put it in the chat and they tell me that. And also I'm seeding there because, you know, I'm eliciting the idea that's hard and it's for the people that want to keep going. And when I ask those three questions, they start talking in the chat. And the more people interact with you, the more people buy. It's just like two-way communication. And it's really, really important to do these three questions. Something I found to work recently is I say, and by the way, don't worry, 
This isn't forced fun. You don't have to interact. I just love doing these events and I love interacting and it gives me more information to help you. And when I say that and I give people the opportunity not to interact, they actually interact more. It's like when you give someone the space to say no, they feel comfortable to say no, they don't feel forced into anything and oftentimes they open up more. Same idea applies on this webinar. All right, number five. Number five, the pitch. So the way you wanna do the pitch, you wanna first of all decide how you do the pitch. If you are going for a small business, one or two people, you probably wanna to go to sales call. If you're selling enterprise, you want a clear future, what's a clear future? The next step in the pipeline, the next step in the sales process, because you've probably got a few decision makers. Decide on your call to action, and then get to the end of the webinar, summarize back what you've, I leave 10 minutes, five minutes, summarize back what you've been through. It's really, really important to summarize back what you've been through because you're showing integrity, you're reminding them you've, you've done what you said, and, so, and then I go off camera, I'm on camera, and right, and by the way, we're getting to my favorite part of the training. I love pitching what we do. Who here, but, but ooh, before I say that, and this is what I say, I say, but, but I, I have a rule. I only pitch if enough people want to hear how you can get my help. I only pitch if enough people here want to know about what the next steps would be if they want to investigate this. Whatever your language is, get the yeses in the chat and then you're free and liberated to pitch. The energy's gone. You've got to enjoy it. No one wants to buy from someone that doesn't enjoy selling. Do you know what I mean? And, and if you don't enjoy selling, um, it's going to be very difficult for you to do this because let's think about this. If you don't enjoy being sold to, and it's usually the people don't enjoy being sold to. And because they don't enjoy being sold to, when they come on these webinars, they don't enjoy selling because they don't want the people that they're selling to to feel the way that they feel when people sell to them. And it really, really holds them back. And so you've just got to embrace it and go for it and sell. And yeah, you'll get pushback. Here's the tips to do the pushback. On Zoom, I put a piece of post. You can't see how many people drop off. You can't see the chat. So I just put a post-it note over the screen so I can't see it because I don't want my energy to shift because I've had all sorts in the chats. I've had all sorts of abuse. I've had all sorts of awful comments. I've had people drop off, but it don't matter. The people that are the right clients, they're already ready to buy. They already know if you're right or not. And you're, you're looking for the right people. They're always there trying to pull you down. So just cover it up. Don't let it, don't let it disturb your energy. It's better eliminated than not. And then just go through it. And here's, here's, here's an interesting thought that I had, right? Having done, I must be getting on to over 300 webinars. I can deliver the same webinar. And from that same webinar, a certain group of people will say, that's the most amazing thing I've seen. The second, <laughs> the second group of people will say, you haven't taught me anything. And that in a nutshell, summarizes exactly why we want to polarize and push away. Because the people that got great value from it, they get great value because I present concepts. I present different ideas of thinking and I present the changing of beliefs. They're ready for it. The people that want the how-to, the tactics, they're usually the cheapskates that don't buy anyway. So I never go into the detail. I never go into screen shares. I'm looking to rearrange beliefs so that my framework is seen as the best way to move forwards.